Let's go ahead and cover a couple more of these special edits in the guided mode. So I'm going to go ahead and open up, or not open up, but just go ahead and highlight one of these photos down here. The depth of field is kind of fun. So I've got this photo open in my bin, or it's actually active in my bin. I'm going to click on depth of field, come over here to the right hand side, click on simple, click on add blur, click on add focus area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag a little circle area. See, it's how it's just making that first point all 100%, and then it kind of slowly, gradually pulls out that from the center. So I can do it a couple different times. If I want it to be a little bit more uh, blurry on the right-hand side, I just go ahead to the left and click and drag. You can keep doing that, and there's you know areas that you can put into effect. See how I'm making this guy stand out and then he's standing out? Probably would not do that, but I just wanted to let you know that you can add that focus area in more than one spot. So let's just cancel that and try another photo. Like for instance, this one here, depth of field. I'm going to click on simple. I'm going to click on add blur. I'm going to click on add focus area. I'm going to focus on him. Click drag kind of pull it a little bit further. As it goes out in the distance, it's blurry. You can make it even more blurry if you want to take the slider up or down to give it that effect. Let's cancel that. Let's move on to the next one. Now this is a frame creator and I go into more detail in the what's new to version 15, so check that out. The Orton effect I really like. Let's pull it and let's make this photo active. Go to Orton effect. Click on Add for Orton Deflect here. This photo may not be the best for it, but let's just add a little bit more blur, a little bit no more noise, a little bit brighter, less bright actually. So that gives it a kind of a different cool effect. It says create a soft, dreamy feel for your photo using the Orton Effect, originally created by Michael Orton. Click Add Orton Effect to apply the effect to the photograph. So basically, you just read through each individual step and it will guide you through the process. Let's check out this Recompose. So I've got this photo here. I don't know if this has ever happened to you. And Jade is standing far away from Sydney. So I want to kind of bring him closer. So I use this tool every once in a while to get that effect. So over here to the right, it says to drag the image handles on the sides or corners to recompose your photo. So I'm going to click on Recompose Photo. And you have these little, little sliders here. They're very hard to see. At first I was like, what are they talking about? But now I have this big brush here. And you may not have a big brush, but you can make it bigger or smaller. And I'm going to say, okay, Jade needs to not be... Um, well, here, let me just show you this. Let me show you this for one. Let me just undo that because this will make much more sense. So if I were just to recompose right now, watch what happens. Jade gets really super skinny, okay? I don't want that to happen. So in order for him not to get super skinny, I have to come in here. Let's just undo that, escape out of there. I have to come in here and say, don't mess with Jade's uh, figure, I guess I could say, or physique. So let's not mess with Jade. And then I'm also not going to mess with these guys either. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly go over the top of them. And you'll see this is kind of weird. It took me a while to understand this, but I don't want to mess with them. I'm doing it really, really quickly. So I don't want to mess with them. So now what we can do, we're protecting them. See how it says protecting? And I'm going to protect this. Now I can come in here and we can pull it together. See how Jade is getting closer to Sydney now? Let's do it about right there. And then I click on OK. And then what I normally do is I go back into the expert mode and I will go ahead and crop it to the size that I want it to be. So this is kind of tricky. You might have to do this a few times, read the instructions. Um, 
on the right hand side, but it is a little bit tricky because of the fact that you do have to protect those images because if you don't, they're going to be distorted. So when it does take a little bit of time to recompose, it takes all of those different pixels and it kind of pulls them together. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click on the expert mode. Let's go ahead, the guided session will, will end. That's okay, let's just go ahead and save. And then I can go into the crop tool. I can make it a five by seven if I want to, or a four by six, let's go four by six. I'm gonna go and put punch in 300 resolution just because. And now I can go back in here and remake this a four by six. Don't want it to get too close to the edges there, so let's just go right about here. A little bit more, I don't like to get too close right there. And over here, let's make it bigger here. Perfect, click on the check mark. And now we have a better photo. Jade is closer to Sydney. So I really do like that one. Uh, that goes back into the guided section and that was under recompose. All right, the other ones are pretty self-explanatory. Now let's move on to photo merge. Hi everyone, I just wanted to personally thank you for allowing me to be part of your DigiScrap journey. So my final thoughts for the day is to enjoy the journey. Thanks for watching. I'm Michelle Stelling with the National Association of Digital Scrapbookers and bye for now.